the single most important thing you can do for wildlife in your garden is to give it water. If you're tight on space, something like a small tub in a window box is a great start, or maybe a half-buried washing up bowl next to a wall. But if you do have the space, in this video we're going to show you how to dig your very own wildlife garden pond, and to grade it, to line it, and to plant it so that it will look after itself and need almost no maintenance whatsoever. Now, way before you begin, it's a good idea to start collecting some rainwater because unlike tap water, which has chemicals in it and potential algae problems, rainwater is pretty much chemical free, so great for wildlife. An edge or corner location is easier to block off if you need to for safety. It will also protect the pond from the worst of winter frost or summer heat. You could also site your pond near a drain pipe to continuously feed fresh rainwater into your wildlife pond and overflow into a bog garden. Check out our pages on mini drain pipe wetlands and bog gardens for more ideas. Avoid overhanging trees if you can, they'll drop leaves and sap. And remember, life needs light, so your pond should be in sun for at least some of the day. Mark out the area to dig. The size is whatever works for you in your space. But before you start digging, have a look at the dimensions of pond liners, because depending on how deep you dig, as a rough rule of thumb, they need to be more than twice the size of your pond to allow for depth. And this bit is the strenuous part, so a few friends will come in handy. As you dig, lightly curved edges will look naturalistic, and they'll also keep it easy to put your liner in place. Build in some shallower ledges. You can use the soil that you're digging out to help to mould them a bit. Now the main job of the pond liner is basically to stop the water draining away into the soil. But before you put it in a hole, there's a few things to think about. Firstly, remove any sharp glass or stones you find in the soil because they could cut through the liner in time. And then the liner is going to want a nice firm footing to settle into. Something like old carpets or underlay is very good, or we're going to use builder's sand because we can mould that just how we want and even wet it down a bit to get it nice and smooth. And you can use your landscaping skills to create an amphibian ramp, a shallow ramp out of the pond that frogs and toads and even newts will love to use to get in and out of the pond. Don't cut the liner first, put it into the hole and then weigh it down with a bit of water. That will help to keep it in place. And then bit by bit, pour a bit more water in and level by level, start to press the liner into place. And you might have to rework some of the ledges as you go. And try and get the folds out, but don't worry too much. Folds will be inevitable. And a ring of slabs or stones around the edge will weigh the liner down a few gaps in between them will make some lovely room for some plants and amphibians to get through. And then you can trim the liner to shape and use the excess soil around the edge to landscape and merge the liner in with its surroundings so that it looks really naturalistic. You'll want to grow most pond plants straight out of pots and you can repot them in a larger container to give them room to grow by using aquatic compost. Now this is a very dense and heavy compost which will help to weigh them down and won't float off. Look for four types of pond plants. Submerged plants with underwater leaves, like these water plantains, will oxygenate the water. They'll keep it clear and algae free so that you won't need the hassle of an electric pump. Floating plants either free float like soldier plants or grow from underwater, like water lilies. Emergent plants grow from the water vertically into the air, like this lesser spearwort or water mint. And marsh plants, like purple loosestrife or these sedges, love to grow in damp conditions around the outside of ponds. These will visually merge your pond in with its surroundings and also provide cover for amphibians. Pond creatures will find your pond, and by next year you'll probably have water boatmen and damselflies interested, maybe frogs, toads, and even newts. And if you don't buy fish, these creatures' young will survive, and a healthy wildlife pond community will thrive. Once a year you'll have to cut back the pond plants like any garden plants, and if the water level goes down in summer, remember to top it up with rainwater. 
And that's about it. You can sit back, enjoy the wildlife and think to yourself, I did that to help wetland nature. So go on, why not give it a go?